Confused about how trains work in Satisfactory Update 5? Stick around and I'll show you everything you need to know about signals, travel directions, intersections, and more. So let's start with the foundation of everything. Trains move cargo or goods around the map and look cool doing it. But recently, Update 5 has added collision to the game and the way to also avoid collisions. Signals. So I'm going to walk you through the basic principles and build up on each one. Feel free to rewind, pause, and jump around as necessary to ensure that you understand each concept. So what exactly are signals? Signals are a way to specify a section of track that a train is allowed to occupy. Signals are directional. The section of track between two signals is for a single train at a time and is called a block. So in Satisfactory, like in the real world, we have two types of signals, block, or a simple signal, and a pathing signal. The pathing signal can be thought of as a complex routing signal whereby a train can reserve a path through a complex section of track so as to avoid collisions through that intersection. More on this later. So how do we place signals? Because signals are directional, it is best to think of placing them as before and after a joint between two rails in the direction of travel that you want the train to be going rather than on the sides of the track. You can see here is the area that the placement is easiest and on the far side as well. Not on the sides, you see how it it's really difficult, in fact almost impossible, that's not really where you're supposed to be aiming. Aim in the section before the joint in the track, down that direction, and the opposite if you're heading in the opposite direction. And then simply click to place. When and where do you place signals? Signals are not needed on tracks that only run a single train, as there is nothing to collide with. The problem comes when you want to run more than one train on a given track, or where tracks paths cross over each other even if they don't switch onto each other. Starting simply, here we have an oval. If we remove one locomotive, then we don't need signals on this route. As soon as we have two locomotives, we need blocks or sections of track for the locomotives and any attached freight cars to claim in order to avoid collisions. Remember that only one train can be in a given block at a time. I know this causes some grief for many who have large rail systems and don't want to signal off and block off miles of track, but once it's set up properly, if you take the time to do so, the system works just like it does on real rail systems around the world to keep traffic moving safely while allowing you to keep building that mega factory. Let's add in block signals here and here. The problem here is that once a train is in each block, there are no clear blocks for the trains to proceed into. We always need at least one more block than we have trains on a given track especially if we are not using two-way rail systems, which we'll go into more detail on later. Adding one more signal allows the trains to proceed into the next clear block of track. Here we're looking at a, uh, a single rail T-junction, which is fine to have if we're only running one train, but then we wouldn't technically need signals at all, would we? But how do you set up this intersection with signals? Again, this only works with one train, more than one, and you're going to end up with trains blocking the paths of other trains, resulting in deadlock. This is just to see what the signals are looking for at intersections and approaching stations so we can learn how they work. This error is one of the easiest to fix as we're simply missing a block signal before the end of a given section of track. Because these are directional signals, they are all facing each other based on how I've got them placed on the T-junction. And therefore, they are not telling each other about the situation on the track behind them. That is why they all say the same error, block has no exit signal. How do you fix this issue? Add a block signal in the direction that the train could go from each of the error signals as shown here. Now, each block has two signals facing the same direction to guide one train safely in any direction it wants to go. Placing signals on a four-way junction for one train is exactly the same. Just follow my expensive animated graphic on the screen to see the placement of everything. So this here just gives you a little bit of an idea if you wanted to build this setup yourself to test it out, what it looks like. So this is why the signals work. You do need two locomotives facing away from each other and each station 
does need to face away from all the others. They can't, um, they can't be facing inwards towards the T-junction, it won't work. Here you can see I've got a block accidentally at the beginning of the station and I have a train sitting at the end of the rail there, so it's occupying the block, so it will not allow that train into the station. So by deleting that, uh, the station then adds, acts as the block, and since the train is already in the block, it's allowed to proceed to the station. So the train docks, and then it proceeds to the st second station, which is the one on the right here. And you can see the signals changing every time the locomotive is about half a locomotive enters at the speeds it was doing. The signal changes. And this is why you need a double header locomotive. You could put freight cars in the middle between those and, and freight stations in there and it would work just fine. But the locomotive has to face forward to go to the next station. And as you can see, all of these stations are facing away from each other. So this locomotive just goes around in circles. So here you see the other mistake I made in that if you notice the locomotive is stopping at that block because again that block is occupied by that locomotive down in the end there even though the station is in the way there the station doesn't act as a an end block so I had to put a signal at the end of the station to let this train know that that section that new block that I just created was clear for it to proceed to reach the station. So now that locomotive is in another block further down the rail, and the, these locomotives are fine to uh, continue on back and forth between there. So now the system is complete, and the reason I don't need block signals at the end of each of these stations is because it's a dead end track. Okay, so when we talk about two track main lines, we're talking about keeping traffic flowing, much like on a highway. One side will go one direction and the other side the other track will go the opposite direction. So you'll never find two opposing signals on the same track. So simply keep those same principles in place when creating your junctions and you'll have beautiful T, Y and four-way junctions operating in no time. So here we have an example of a right-hand drive two-track mainline terminating at a station. It will be used commonly for far-reaching stations bringing resources to factories or other hubs for transport and distribution. Notice the direction of the station in this example. It must be following the direction of travel of the track. All right, so as the sun sets on our line here, uh, let's add a T-junction here to allow trains to head off in other directions of travel. So I find it always easiest to build your straights first and then connect your angles afterwards, and oftentimes leaving three full foundation pieces between the two sections works really well for angles. Always make sure that your lines that are side by side are the exact same length and that way you won't have any clearance issues. We're gonna have to delete this section here in order to make the distances and the termination points the same. So here I'm counting three and then one, two, three to the left from that tile there, one, two, three, and it's gonna terminate at that line there as you'll notice here and the line, the parallel line, will do the exact same thing. Make sure again to terminate them at the same spot. So here again, one, two, three, one, two, three. And I didn't have enough room, so we'll just build that out. Double check my spacing, one, two, three, one, two, three, and drop it there. Parallel line has to terminate in the same location. And then we're just gonna continue the line straight on through between the two of them. So now to add the T-junction, we just need to hook up each direction of travel to where it would be going. So a track coming, a train coming from that track is going to connect here on the right-hand track because that's its direction of travel. And a train going here is going to be coming from here in that direction of travel on that track. And now we just need to be able to turn left and right from the same locations. So from here to turn left which is from our perspective right. Simply snap it and from here to turn left from here. 
simply go around. All right now, so with a little bit of moonlight to brighten our evening here, let's add signals to this junction. And this is where our pathing signals are gonna come in handy. So for this particular junction, everything in the center crosses over. Some are diverging paths, some are simply crossover paths, but they all touch. So the game automatically lumps them all into one block. So what we have to use here is pathing signals. Again, we're right-hand drive, so we're placing them in the right-hand side, facing away from us direction every time. And then trains coming from each of these directions can now follow through this block that we're creating in the center. Because it's one block in the center, every signal entering that block has to be of the same type. So if we were to use block signals, they'd all have to be block signals. But in our case, we used pathing signal, so every signal had to be a pathing signal on the entrance. And then we terminate that center block, that junction block, by using block signals on the outgoing side of each of the directions of travel. So we have three incoming directions of travel, three outgoing directions of travel, and as you saw me build there, we have pathing signals going in, blocking signals going out. And you can see all the signals are active, none of them are complaining, so we've done it correctly. I'm going to explain what these signals are looking for now at this level of complexity, because we can go further with extra details, which I'll try to add in a bit, but for now, how do these pathing signals work? First of all, the path that a train wants to take through a pathing signal controlled block is reserved when the train enters the block directly before the block that the path signal controls. To show you in this example, a train traveling along this path will reserve that path when it arrives here. The train momentum is taken into account at all times, so braking distance is calculated by the train and it will begin to slow before reaching a signal if it doesn't have a guaranteed path through that signal. So if a train were to be traveling along this route here, its path would cross over a route coming from this direction here, and the train coming from this direction would be forced to wait for a clear path here at the beginning of this path signal entrance to the controlled block until its own path was clear. Then it would be allowed to proceed. Given the short distance between these two signals, a train would likely begin slowing down back here in order to make sure that it could stop at this point because it hasn't entered this block in order to reserve its path through the junction. In order to mitigate that, I recommend when possible to move this signal further away from the pathing signal in order to reserve the path sooner and, as a result, the train would not need to slow down at all. This is best done for mainline runs as they will be your busiest and keeping the mainline direction flowing is the priority for the least slowdowns and the best throughput of trains and goods. Let's look at a couple stations set along a bi-directional two-track mainline. And to be clear, I recommend that you place your station off of the mainline on a siding whenever possible due to the destructive forces that delays can have on a busy mainline. Plan for future expansion. And I know you haven't heard that for the first time. This example is common and replicatable, but this solution is a tiny bit simpler and more straightforward when it comes to signaling. So we'll start here. Not everyone will like the aesthetic of adding hills to make this work, but ducking under the station can often keep the mainline track flowing better. So it may be something you decide to do instead of the first example, but they both function more or less the same. Our first example needs path signals to control the crossover track sections, just like our T-junctions, and the duck under station is fine with regular block signals as tracks never overlap. The station can be placed on either side of the track in either direction for most builds. In the example here, my stations are on the right-hand side so that the trains can clear the main line as quickly as possible from the most common direction of travel, but that could change in the future. Either way, it works. Also of note is that this particular station can only be entered from one direction of travel, but can be exited in either direction. The blocking I have used looks like this. This more complex intersection makes use of the ever so powerful path signal. Path signals can chain together to clear a route through a more complex intersection such as this one. Here's what I mean. This lower mainline signal is a path signal to control 
this crossing here. There are two entrances to this crossing, and as such, two path signals. The block for the path ends here before the station, and not far up the hill in this direction, but there is another complex intersection further down the mainline track that a longer train could end up blocking the first intersection if it were unable to enter the second crossing area. So, through the use of multiple path signals in a row, the train will lock out its path back at the top of the hill from here all the way through the station crossings so as not to block the exit of the station, or a mainline train in the opposite direction turning into the station. The block is closed out here for the second crossing, and a path signal here on the far end controls the path entrance from the exit of the station. This area is still work in progress in my game, but the signaling will work as is once the mainline extends beyond here. As of the date of this video, trains cannot plan en route in order to bypass occupied blocks on multiple routes to the same location, and will currently only use the shortest route to their destination, making holding ladders and the like useless. But knowing the coffee stain devs, we will likely get a feature like that at some point, as I'm pretty sure I saw it as a feature request on the QA site. So maybe, hopefully. Definitely go put your two bits in there. One more thing to know about path signals is that when they reserve their path through a section of track, they are counting the block after the exit signal or the block signal after the last path signal as part of the path. Because of this, if the exit block is occupied, the train will not be able to reserve their path and will wait at the entrance of the path that they're trying to reserve until the exit block is clear. So avoid making your exit block too much larger than your longest trains in order to speed up the flow of traffic through high throughput areas of your rail system. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. If that helped you out, hit that like button and maybe share it with a friend who's having trouble or is maybe a little frustrated with signals in the new update. If you have some more specific use cases that you'd like to see fleshed out, leave them in the comments below and I'll consider doing a follow-up video with some more detail on a few specific use cases that I've found in my network that I didn't necessarily show here. Thanks for watching.